Hey guys and welcome back to a new Composer multi-platform video. In this video, you will learn how you can implement permission handling for iOS and Android. So as you probably know, runtime permissions are a thing on these mobile platforms. So especially if you need to do something in your app that might harm the user's privacy, like recording audio, recording a video, um, browsing through the user's files or photos, then it's very likely that the platform, the operating system, wants you to request a runtime permission for that. So it wants that you request from the user that it's okay for this app to do this. And how these permissions are requested just differs in iOS than it does on Android. And if you also want to target desktop, then it's even more difficult because each desktop platform, each desktop OS has its own way of handling these permissions. Like uh, Windows has a different approach than Mac OS and Linux. And as of now, there is no real global way to implement permission handling for all these platforms, except for having your own kind of logic for each specific platform, which just uses the API that uh, the operating system provides, which is why I will only focus on iOS and Android here because for that, we have a very cool library. And I think we don't need to overcomplicate this topic with a very custom implementation here because I'm pretty sure at some point we will have some sort of uh, shared logic that is built in that allows us to handle these permissions that comes from JetBrains directly. So just to give you a quick demo of what we will build here, just a one screen app with a button to request record audio permission. And if we click that, then we get the permission request. If we click don't allow, Nothing will happen. We can request it again. Clicking it, we get the permission dialog again. And on Android, that's a very Android specific thing. After we've declined the permission twice, then this dialog won't pop up in our app anymore. But if we then want to still grant the permission, then we would need to send the user to our app settings. And the same actually counts for iOS. I think on iOS, it already um, does not show the dialog anymore after declining once. So if we hit download allow the second time, then you can see it says record audio permission was permanently denied. And if the user should now uh, grant it, then we can't request it in the app anymore, but we need to open the app settings, click here, and then we will get it to our app here where we can then click on permissions and microphone. We can say, okay, allow only while using the app. And if we then relaunch this app, we should be able to see yes that our permission was granted. And the same will, of course, also work for iOS. All right, what do you need to do in order to follow through this video? On the one hand, you need to check the GitHub link down below because you need to paste a few initial dependencies we will use here. On the one hand, most importantly, that is MoCo, uh, which stands for Modern Kotlin. So that's just a, a set of libraries made for Kotlin multi-platform that make our lives a lot easier for example, for permission handling. And again, maybe in future, there will be some sort of first party support. So just a, a common API JetBrains will provide here for permission handling, um, but I don't see that happening anytime soon, which is why we will stick to MoCo here. And we will also use uh, the lifecycle view model dependencies so we can also set that all up in a view model like we would do in a real project probably. So make sure to paste those three versions in your project and those four dependencies here. And in case you don't know how to create a Compose multi-platform project, the first thing you would need to do is go to kmp.jetbrains.com, tick Android and iOS, give your project a name, uh, and the package ID, and then you can download it down here, open it in Android Studio, and uh, you can then paste these versions. All right, let's get started and open our project hierarchy. And make sure you're in the project view, open the Compose app module, and in common mains or shared code section, let's open our application composable, so our entry point here. We want to get rid of all the initial UI and rather write our own. And one thing I actually forgot is to also, of course, add these dependencies. So let's first of all go to Gradle before we can actually use these. Uh, so build a Gradle of the Compose app module, scroll down here to our common main dependencies. And here we can first of all add the view model, references, libs, lifecycle, view model, and view model compose, as well as here we need API dependencies. So uh, these are also available to the modules that depend on this one. And we refer to moco dot permissions and actually moco permissions compose. So we just have some compose specific functionality so that we can request those permissions directly from our shared compose code. After you successfully synced Gradle, we can now dive into our UI. I get rid of these boxes here and then write, first of all, factory, because we need a so-called uh, permission controller factory. So the permission controller is really the, the central unit kind of we can use from MoCo in order to request permissions, in order to check if a permission was granted and just to also get the overall state of the permission. So if it was permanently denied, granted, denied and so on. And we want to get that factory with remember permissions controller factory. And whenever we have a factory class, then we can create something with that factory class. And that will be our controller in this case. So whenever 
our factory changes in some sense, so we pass that in as a key, we want to call factory.createPermissionsController. And this is now really the unit, as I said, we can use, for example, to open the app settings. Uh, that is something the library already provides, which will open the iOS app settings on iOS and the Android app settings on Android, of course. Um, it allows us getting the current permission state for a specific permission. Provide permission will request a permission if it was not granted before, or we can just check if a certain permission was granted. And what we want to do in our compose code is we want to have a bind effect composable, which will also come from this Moco library, where we pass in our controller. And this bind effect composable will just make our controller lifecycle aware. Since we will also pass this uh, controller to our view model at the moment, the view model somehow needs to know about the UI lifecycle because uh, the permission dialog has its own very specific lifecycle, which might be shorter than the one from the view model. And this composable just handles and syncs these lifecycles. And in order to now manage these permissions in our view model, we first of all need a view model, of course. So here in Kotlin, let's have something like a permissions view model. Make that a class which inherits from view model. And here we can then pass in an instance of this permissions controller controller of type permissions controller and let's leave this blank for now so we can just initialize an instance of this um, view model in here by saying val view model is equal to um get no actually just view model this one here and here we just create an instance of our view model so permissions view model with our controller and that's something i really like about this library because we can request permissions, check that all in our view model, which was always a bit difficult to do manually. I honestly don't know how this behaves for testing. So if we can easily pass um, a fake instance, for example, for this permissions controller, but I assume that this is possible since it's just a normal interface. Since if this would not be possible and we could only create a permissions controller here, with uh, such a factory, which we only get access to in a composable, then I would rather not do this in the view model since this would force you to have a real UI tests in order to test your view model, which you really don't need. But just a little thought of mine, I think it's very easy to create a fake instance of that by just having your own kind of um, fake controller or so, which is then a permissions controller, something like this. And oops, and then in here, you can override these four Functions, yes, that's looking pretty good. Nevertheless, let's go on with our permission request code. And on the one hand, we need some sort of state uh, that reflects, well, the, the current permission state. And in our sample, we want to request the record audio permission. So if we would want to um, record something with our microphone in the app like for a video call or so, then we want to have a state that shows, okay, is this record audio permission currently granted? Is it not granted? Was it maybe permanently declined or was it maybe canceled? And we can do this with a var state by mutable state of, and in here we pass in a permission state which comes from this library as well, and the initial state is just not determined. You can see we have denied, granted, not determined, denied always, so if we permanently declined it, and not granted. We start off with not determined, since at this point we don't yet know if we have this permission. We make this a private set so we can only change the value from our review model. And here, first of all, in init, we want to actually update the state with the current permission state. So if we already granted the permission when we open the app, we want to show that. And we need to do this in view model scope since um, checking that will actually suspend. So we open a curtain here in view model scope and we can update our state with controller dot get permission state. And here we now need to pass in the permission we want to check for, which in our case is record audio. Down here, we want to have a function that actually requests permission if we if we don't have that yet. Let's call that provide or request record audio permission. Um, I call this provide because it's the same naming that uh, Moco also uses just to stay consistent here. And here we also need a view model scope coroutine. And we can say permission controller, or actually just controller here, dot provide permission, permission dot record audio. And this function will check if the permission was already granted. If so, then this will, won't do anything. But if it was not granted, then it will request that. And depending on the result, it will either pass, so it will just succeed. There won't be any issues with it if we granted the permission, or it will throw a corresponding exception. So if we take a look in here in the docs, then this might throw a denied exception. So when we just declined the permission request, it might throw in the denied always exception. So if the permission has been permanently declined or request canceled, you can see that's only for Android. Since on iOS, we can't cancel these re permission requests, um, then it will throw that exception. So we want to surround this with a try and catch block in order to also react to these things. First of all, we want to reply or um, react to this denied always exception. 
Then we want to react to denied exception, no, denied exception. And lastly, only if you want that, you can also react to the, what is it, request cancelled exception? Yes. I think that actually only applies to notification permissions on Android, since I think the, the default permission request is not cancelable. Okay, so if our code here passes and reaches this point, and it did not throw an exception, then we know that the user successfully granted the permission. So we can update our state with um, actually permission state that granted. If it was always denied, then we can update it with permission state that denied always. If it was denied, we say denied. And here we can just um, maybe just print the stack trace or so. Um, so here we don't have an explicit state for that one to show in our UI. But if you need to react to that, you can. And maybe one little note here, because it took me a while, make sure to put this denied always exception above this denied exception, because if we take a look in here, you will notice that each denied always exception is also a denied exception. And if you swap these out, so if you would have the denied exception as the first catch block, and it would throw a denied always exception, this will still match with this first catch block. Um, so you would never reach this um, this other catch block. If we put this on at the very top, then it will check for, for this specific exception first. And if it's not a denied always exception, it might still be a denied exception, uh, which it will then uh, check second. All right, that's it for our view model. So now we can take this state here in our application composable and actually show UI based on it. So let's just have a little column here where we say, okay, that column has a modifier. And with this modifier, we fill the whole screen size and we just center everything vertically. So vertical arrangement is arrangement center as well as horizontally. So alignment center horizontally. Then inside of that column, let's have a when expression. So depending on the state we get from our review model, depending on what that is, we want to show a different UI, of course. So we hit Alt Enter here, add the remaining branches, not determined will result in our default state. So just with the button to request the permission, so we can get rid of that, as well as not granted, since then we also just show our button. If the permission state is granted, then we just want to show text that everything is cool. So um, record audio permission granted, like this. If it was denied, then we actually also just want to show our the single button to just request it again. So let's get rid of that since we will have an else case for that. Just for the denied always case, we have another little special case where we show that first of all with a text where we say, okay, um, permission was permanently declined. And then we can show a button down here. And when we click that button, we want to open our app settings in order to let the user manually grant this permission. So here we can have a text, open app settings. And when we click this button, we can use our controller and call open app settings. It's really that easy with this library. So we have the case for granted where we just show text. We have the case for always denied where we show a little info text together with a button to open the app settings. And in all other cases, we just want to show our single button to request a permission. So Else we have a button, then on click Lambda. And here the text can say something like request permission. When we click this button, then we want to also use our controller, actually not here, but inside our view model. Here we just want to say view model, provide or request record audio permission. And this will then fire the permission request down here. And depending on what the result of that is, it will update our state, which will then update our when expression and content here of our screen. All right, I would say we can try this on Android. One thing we need for Android is we actually need to also mention and declare this permissions or all permissions we need for this app inside our manifest. So in Android main, we have this Android manifest XML where we can go up here and have a tag that says uses permission record audio. And then we can launch this here on my Pixel device or whatever type of device you are using. This is still the old app. So the product is building and hopefully launching very soon. There we go, the app launched and we do see our request permission button because initially it's of course not granted. If we click that, we do get the permission request, very cool. If we click don't allow, we still see our button. If we request it again, we can click don't allow again. And yes, it says permission was permanently declined. We can open our app settings, get to our app settings. And if we now go to permissions, Mm, click on microphone, allow only while using the app, and then relaunch the app. And then we will be able to hopefully see, yes, 
that the record audio permission was granted. All right, but that is only one part of the equation. We also want to test this on iOS, of course. How do we do this? There's also a comparable thing we need to set up for iOS, just like for this, um, for Android here in this manifest with recording audio. So in iOS, what we actually need to specify is a specific text that will show on the permission dialog for what this permission is actually needed. And we have to add this in Xcode. So I'm gonna open our product here, go to iOS app, open that, open this iOS app Xcode product, and there's a workspace file is what we need. We want to right click here, open this in Xcode. All right, here in Xcode, we need to open this info file, which is pretty much just a table of some values. You can compare this with the Android manifest. And here we just need to right click, add a row, and we need to paste and as a microphone usage description, just like I wrote here, hit enter and you will see that it turns into a privacy microphone usage description. And here on the right side, we can now specify a description what this permission is used for. So for example, so that others can hear you in the call, we need your microphone. Something that makes sense to the user, which will then be shown together with the permission dialog. Make sure to add this here, then select a device like this iPhone 15 Pro, which I will use here and launch this. And then hopefully uh, this will also work on iOS. All right, there we go. We also see our button here on iOS. If we click request permission, then we do get this. Our app would like to access the microphone with our just specified description. If we say don't allow, let's try that first. We do immediately get this permission was permanently declined um, string because on iOS, that is actually the case after just declining it once. But we can also open the app settings here and it we will get to the iPhone app settings. If we toggle a microphone here and then relaunch the app, then we do see that record audio permission was granted. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Down below, you'll find a link with more advanced Android and Kata multi-platform premium courses. Check them out. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.